And we're back. Tom Holland is a British historian and author. He wanted to research the origins of Islam and just how real the historical evidence for it is. He produced Islam, the untold story for Channel 4, that's a station in the UK. Here's a preview of his work. The problem of writing the history of the rise of Islam is that we have absence of evidence. Not being able to know something is no proof that it doesn't exist. Did the Prophet Muhammad come here or no? Yes. Historian Tom Holland goes in search of the truth about the origins of Islam, a religion that helps to shape our world. Islam, the untold story, Tuesday at 9 on 4. So you can see Holland concludes that the evidence is in fact slim. There's really only one reference to Mecca in the entire Quran, and there's no real evidence of Muhammad's life from his own era, aside from within the Quran itself. You all know what I'm going to say next, don't you? Complaints and anger from Muslim circles. 550 official complaints to the broadcaster and also the television regulator Ofcom, which is actually considering investigating this offensive program. Why so thin-skinned? Holland, who according to one reviewer actually seems like a bleeding heart lefty, just felt this, was to this topic was a legitimate subject of research just as much as any other. Well, don't all religions face similar scrutiny from researchers? Our next guest, he almost thrives on critiques of his religion. He devoted an entire section of his last book to taking on such criticisms. Seems like thin-skinned Muslims could learn a thing or two from, that's right, Michael Corrin. Hey, Michael, so, so what's your first take on this story here? Uh, entirely predictable. I, Channel 4, I know quite well. My first job in TV back in 83, the first year I think it was of Channel 4, I, I wrote a series called The Outsiders for them. It's a left of center channel. I mean, it's not hard left, it's an established channel, but it will be more liberal. Guardian newspaper, that sort of thing, uh, equivalent of the Toronto Star here. They have had, I know of at least three different series about Christianity and the Bible that are very anti-Christian, really, and very anti-Bible. Bible's not true. What does anti-Christian mean in this case? Um, saying that the fundamental teachings and historical understanding and perception of Christianity are false. They're based in mythology and apocrypha, and so there's no reason to believe. And you're allowed to do that in a free right. society. Relatively similar to what he's doing, although he doesn't seem to have an agenda, but he comes to the same conclusion. Probably gentler than this. What I've seen of it and what I've read, what he says, and he, he's, a, he's a Cambridge-educated historian, he's on the left. I mean, he's, he's known in Britain. You're respected man, but he's very much on the left. This is not Niall Ferguson, it's, it's certainly not Mark Stein, it's certainly not a Michael Corrin, it's someone who just wanted to research. What he says, and other historians have concluded the same, is Mecca's only mentioned once. Jerusalem is not really mentioned until al Kabs is mentioned, but mm, Muhammad, well, he figures, but is he actually a collection, a compilation of various figures of interest and importance who were around at the time? He also says this, that Islam was a product of the Arabian Empire. So the Arabs come along as a, as a, a middle class, a merchant class. They assemble, they need a unifying religion, and they think of Islam. So Arabian Empire leads to Islam. Historians, Muslim historians, say, no, no, no. Islam comes along, and its beauty and greatness leads to the, to the Arab Empire. All of this is a, a viable, plausible, moderate, informed discussion. And Christians respond when it's applied to their religion. Maybe they, a couple of people are upset, but generally, well, okay, that's interesting. In this case, no, this is blasphemy. More than 600 complaints, official and unofficial, but also death threats. You saw this with, with our colleague Ezra, for example, what happened in Calgary. He was effectively charged with blasphemy. He had a debate with an right. imam on radio. And in Canada, no less. In Canada. And, and so people, the, the imam said, you can't say that. He went to the police. They said, he went to Human Rights Commission. They said, yes, we do. You're seeing this replicated throughout whether the Islamic diaspora exists because it has it in, in, in its homelands. You can't critique Islam. Okay, we're, we, we agree that there's some thin skin stuff going on here. As I said in the intro, maybe some Muslims could learn from you. All right, so the barometer of offense, that's up to you to decide. Mm. Now, when I look at the Jewish faith, for instance, they actually have in their religious practices, they have questioning going on. They encourage mm. people to, to question the, the basic precepts of the faith. M Muslim folks clearly have a problem with doing this, you've said in Christian circles, there's, uh, not in Christian circles, but people critique Christianity. Yeah. I mean, can you can you truly thrive from these criticisms and, yeah. and, and come out stronger? You know, we know Kierkegaard says all faith, yes. leap of faith. So clearly, you know, these are these are Thank tests to people's faith. Uh, well, it's debatable. Yeah. It's one of those. That's a very good point, though, because the the quintessence of, of uh, I suppose of Hasidic Judaism, Orthodox Judaism, is this Talmudic questioning. Uh, people say, right. ah, but that might not be true, and then someone comes up with the answer. In Christianity, there, there have been periods of Christian history when it's been lost, I think, you know, maybe during the period of the Inquisition, but generally questioning, questioning Aquinas and so on, Newman. 
But in Islam, people learn by rote. I'm sorry, there may have been a very brief period in the 1300s when there was an enlightened time of Islamic thought. But if you look at the great universities of Egypt, people learn by rote. And you're not allowed to question and critique. It's simply not acceptable. It's in the constitution of some of these countries, for goodness sake. Uh, on that note, let's look at a tweet that Tom Holland actually sent in. He sent it to uh, what looks like a, a Muslim Twitter user, Hafiza Rahman. He says, you are reminding me very effectively why I had vowed to keep off this topic. Banging head against brick wall, he says. Renewal of silence. So, you know, again, he's saying, oh, I, maybe I shouldn't have actually done this. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about these things. Is that not, is that not the chill that people want to yeah. see? He's, he's probably physically frightened. I don't blame him. But I'm sorry, you have to stand up if you believe in truth and say, we ha it's, it's another uh, TV historical documentary. I love them. I, I grew up on them. They're very good. He's responsible, a balanced historian. Because just watch them all, make up your mind, decide, agree well, with one, watch, disagree with don't another, watch don't watch the watch. bloody thing. If you don't yeah. like it, don't watch it. Don't buy the DVD. By the way, will there be a DVD? I wonder if that'll happen. I right? don't think so, yeah. No, that's funny. You, you know, and one other thing, I mean, that le this leads me to think when we talk about barometer of offense. I mean, with the cartoons, I've always thought, maybe we should just all draw cartoons. They can't all respond to all of them. And then people just kind of get used to it. And the Muslim folks go, oh, well, I guess drawing cartoons is just what happens. Well, Fire and brimstone hasn't gone down. I mean, you've got to get people used to a culture of criticism, which, which all of Western society tends to value. You do, and that's what we believe here at Sun News. The problem is some of our, our fiercest critics are the very people who say you shouldn't criticize certain groups. And I think Islam is probably the top of that list. The cartoon came out of a, a certain environment. You had a man, a professor, who was badly beaten up, very badly beaten up, for merely quoting the Quran uh, in a very supportive manner to a group of non-Muslims. For that, he was kidnapped and beaten up. And the, in Denmark, that did pride itself on tolerance, says, how tolerant are we anymore? And that's when they called for cartoons to be drawn. Kurt Vestergaard, who I've interviewed twice, he's an anarchist. He's on the left. He's not yeah. a Christian. He's not a conservative. He'd drawn many more offensive cartoons about Christianity. That's why he was so shocked when people said, we're now going to kill you, and we will kill, and, and did kill other people, burn down property. We have to be able to judge Islam the same way we judge Christianity, Judaism, and, and we any judge other them religion. all quite, quite severely, and they're which, open to lots yes, of criticism, which is fine. as that, they should be. They should be. That, that is how you develop intellectually and theologically. That is why much of the Islamic world has not developed intellectually and theologically. Michael, I wish I could talk with you about this a lot more. I know Salman Rushdie's got a book coming out, Joseph Anton, a memoir. It's his uh, time spent undercover. I'm sure this is yeah. going to bring up exactly the same topic again. I hope, uh, well. hope you and I have the chance to talk about that again. It's Michael Corrin, ladies and gentlemen, host of the arena. Send me your thoughts on, on this issue. Did Tom Holland go too far or is he asking the right questions? Email in a byline at sunmedia.ca. Here's what's coming up next.